You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. Let's hydrate ourselves. Mm. Ah, I love boba at 11, 16 p.m. Okay, so you guys already know what's gonna happen with this video, which, by the way, was supposed to come out last week. But if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I've had some dilemma with, a, with an accessory that I added last minute. You know, I just, uh, I, I definitely realized that she's not a chemist. She's no Professor Hutonium. And, um, yeah, should have paid attention in chemistry class, for sure. But yes, you saw the title correctly. Yes, it is happening. I will be making Sasha, also known as Bunny Boo, from Bratz. She's one of my favorite characters because of her amazing and funny personality and her leadership skills is off the hook. She, I feel like she's literally the only one who gets the gigs for the brats. Like, I mean, from the TV show, she's literally the only one who's like, hey you guys, I got this gig, I got this project. I feel like she, she I mean, she literally is the leader of the group, you know? After making the Tweebles and also Burdine, everyone wanted to see my take on the main four girls. And so here we are, we're gonna do our best. Um, and I hope you guys like my take on them. I'm definitely such a Brass fan where I listen to their songs on a daily. I listen to Brad's songs, especially Rock Angels, all the time. And I even think that the live action, even though the casting is a little wonky, and also the story, um, it was actually pretty iconic. Bunny Boo loves fashion, of course, but her main thing is music. The main four pretty much have a shared affinity with certain interests, but they each have their own specialties. Since they all have their own distinct personalities and style, I wanted to cater to that when it comes to my designs. My design for Bunny Boo is a little bit sentimental um, because I actually gave her my grandmother's jacket from the early 90s, um, which is what I'm wearing right now, currently, as you can see. Let me see if you guys can see this. Um, which I actually shouldn't be wearing it because it's actually kind of falling apart. It, I believe it's leather. I don't think it's real leather. Um, but yes, she is falling apart. Um, she's not doing well, but she looks so, so cute. Um, as you can see, it is a bomber jacket. I love all of the colors. They're literally like, it's definitely like very 90s. I found that it matched Sasha so well and I wanted to design around it. I really love Sasha in red and I found that the red really kind of made the jacket pop so much. As you can see, I'm kind of doing that. I'm like, you know what, let's co let's match with Sasha. So I'm wearing red here, and as you can see the jacket, it just fits really well, I think. So I designed her wearing a long sleeve extra cropped top with matching high-waisted shorts. I gave it an off-white minimalist look since the main attraction is definitely the jacket. And I also continued the color with her thigh-high heelless boots. Yes, you heard that correctly. I want to bring resurgence to 2012 or to 2014, maybe. Um, I do own a pair of heelless shoes. I also gave her a protective hairstyle in a long twist since I've never seen Sasha with them. And I love seeing it on Angela Bassett and Monet Exchange. <laughs> her look is fun, it's vibrant, and it screams Bunny Boo, in my opinion. Um, and she can definitely show off some cool dance moves with this ensemble. I can't wait to show you guys how Bunny Boo rocks my grandmother's jacket. She, I mean, dare I say, wears it better. Actually, I've never seen my grandmother wear it. <laughs> I just, it was archived. It said Lola. I, I know she looked fabulous in this. Um, yes, you're ready. My, my, my grandmother is definitely one of my fashion icons, and this just proves it. Like, hello. And um, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and jump on the video. So for our head, I will be using this Sasha doll I found from Savers. Yes, as always, this is gonna be another hybrid. She looks like one of the original faces, so I'm really excited to give her a new life. 
First, I'm gonna go ahead and remove her head and also her hair. Brad's heads are pretty hard and stiff, so it makes it really difficult to remove the rerouted hair. So I dip it in hot water to soften the head, and it makes it a little bit easier to remove the hair. It's not like, you know, so easy, but it's just a little bit. Then we can now remove her factory paint with acetone. For her body, I will give her Justine Dancer's body, which I know doesn't completely match her, but it is the best one from Ever After High. I'm sure there's a Monster High doll out there that will result in a better skin match, but I really prefer the Ever After High bodies a little bit more. Then I want to tackle her feet first to give it the Bratz treatment, so I took my saw to slice her feet apart. And then we should have something like this. We can now drill a hole, and I just use a manual drill for this. For the ankle pegs, I'm using this hanger bolt in this specific size, and I got this one particularly from Home Depot. I do wish there was a slightly smaller size, but this is what I've used on Burdeen and also Tweevil, so it's been working. You will definitely need to use some elbow grease because this can take some time and patience to screw in. After that, we can now make Ever After High wear Brad's shoes. Look at that. As you can see, the plastic in the back expanded a little bit, so the color became a little bit lighter, but that's an easy paint fix. It's nothing really to worry about as long as the screw isn't coming out of the skin. Now let's go ahead and attach her new head. Now for her shoes, I know I showed you guys a method on sculpting them before, but I ended up 3D printing a pair of Gothic Zombies creation. This time, I do want to try and sculpt it from epoxy clay and see if I can get good results. I first sketch out the design and size and I cut it out for reference. Now let's go ahead and mix our epoxy sculpt together. And we can now start sculpting the shoe. I'm sculpting one side at a time to get an idea of how wide I want her shoes to be. And I'm also going for a completely mirrored shoes, so there's technically no right or left side. Now we can go ahead and start sculpting the other side. After sculpting, I let it sit there for at least 2 hours so that the clay can become a little bit more stiff and then I can join them together. This is where you want to perfect those seams and symmetry as much as you can. And after it fully cures and after 3 sanding grits, we should have something like this. It is so freaking smooth and heavy, which is really good. And technically, you can just stop here and just sculpt the other shoe and just drill holes with it and then you're done. But I want the second shoe to be a carbon copy of this one. So let's go ahead and put our chemist hat on and bring out the mold and resin. I'm using Smooth On's Mold Star Part A and B, and this is mixed in a 1 by 1 ratio that could be by weight or volume. I have my scale here to get accurate measurements, and it's always good to overcompensate, I say. Now we have that ready, let's go ahead and mix them together. We have to mix fast until it's homogenous, and the cure time for this is 30 minutes. And now we can go ahead and start pouring our mold. The shoe is fairly simple, but still make sure to tap around to get all the mold everywhere. 
After it becomes solid, let's remove it from the cup and remove our shoe. Now let's whip out our white resin. This is also by Smooth On and it's called Smoothcast 300. This one you can mix 1 to 1 volume or 100 to 90 by weight, which honestly I don't know how that works. But anyways, mix time for this is 3 minutes and cure time is 10 minutes. Long story short, you need to be ready and get your timer set. Then I mixed it vigorously and poured it in the mold. After 10 minutes, it should turn bright white and we can demold her. And we just repeat that to get a pair of shoes. This has been slightly sanded as well and it's much lighter than the epoxy clay. Um, and now we can go ahead and drill some hole into it. For some reason, it was a little stubborn so I went for my electric drill. Overall, it should fit like this. Let's take a break and move on to her face. As always, we need to set her face with Mr. Super Clear to prime it so we can actually draw on it. I take a lighter watercolor pencil to map out and sketch out her face. You want to establish every aspect of the face in the first layer, so the remaining layers will be used to make the colors more vibrant. The first layer is where you want to do most of your trial and errors. After mapping her eyes, I also start to add colors and pigments all in the same layer. I wanted to give her purple eyeshadow to match the jacket and red and purple is giving me Sailor Mars vibes and I'm here for it. Her eye color keeps changing, but in the show, she has heterochromia. Both of her eyes are green and brown. I also start adding pastels in the same layer since that's the one that needs the most build up. You will also see me building her brows from cream to umber to black. I wanted to give it dimension rather than just pure black. To highlight her brow bone, I'm taking golden brown to give it the base and I will make it a little lighter later. And of course, the eyeliner needs to be sharp like a knife. Now we just have to build those layers up so we can make the colors more vibrant and opaque. Usually I do this for the iris, eyeshadow, and the blush. I feel like I keep saying that Rock Angels is definitely my favorite, like, style for them, and even, like, album, maybe. Um, I just love all of the songs in it, um, and just the whole aesthetic of them being a rock band is just really, really cool. I really do need them to release every single Brat song on Spotify, though, because the only ones that's there is, like, Rock Angels and the live-action movie soundtrack. And I just, I just need more. I need the ones from the TV show. I need, I need all of them, you know? Comment down below which one's your favorite music, which one's your favorite track, character, moment in the movie, something. Um, I wanna, I wanna see what you guys think of the Brats. Let's not forget her bottom lashes.
Since I'm giving her a natural hairstyle, I want her edges to be laid for the gods. And this will also consist of different tones of browns and also black. To make her scleras and teeth wider, I just use acrylic paint. Now we just have to do some finishing touches. I want to give her lips some dimension, so I'm giving it shadows using pastels. And to make her skin sparkle, I'm using pearlax powders in gold. And of course, we can't forget her catch lights. For her lashes, I'm using these human fake lashes and I just get them from the local beauty supply stores. I roughly use 10 for each eye and I just use Elmer's glue all to adhere them. After it dries, I trim the inner side to give it a better shape. And now we are done with her face. Now let's work on her hair. Since I wanted to give her long twists, I use this warm brown acrylic yarn. This yarn is actually made out of four strands and I unravel it to get two. In brad scale, this looks really good. You can actually just use the yarn by itself if you want them to be thicker. And here's the comparison. You can see the original is more dense and thicker than the unraveled ones. And also you can definitely reroute with this, but I may want to change her hair in the future, so I opted for a wig. I painted her wig cap because I thought I wanted the illusion that it's her scalp, but I ended up covering all of it anyways. I got a lot of inspiration from my froggy stuff and Kwani figures on Instagram. If you guys want to see more dolls with beautiful natural hair, they got you covered. Actually, all hair types from 1A to 4C. Like I said, I just really wanted to give her long twist also because I was so obsessed with Angela Bassett in American Horror Story Kevin and Apocalypse. She was so regal and I just love how her hair moved. So I actually never had brats growing up so I was really really envious whenever I go to the mall and I would see the displays, they were really really cool. One thing I did have is a PlayStation 2 and that's when they were doing a lot of like doll video games like Barbie had video games, the Bratz had video games and I loved it. Oh my god like ugh that, that was such a I mean now it's very dated but at the time it was so so cool. I used watered down black acrylic paint to give her hair some color dimension. I didn't want it to be too flat with just brown, so I really like the added hints of black. And now we're done with the wig. And here is a before and after of Bunny Boo. As you can see, she is more contemporary, a little bit more modern, and also she is smizing for the gods. Now let's go ahead and work on her outfit. Um, I will be sewing all of the reds, so I am warning all of the professional seamstresses. This may be very stressful to watch, um, a newbie coming through. <laughs> um, I'm tracing my mannequin to get a reference for the sizing and also the shape. And this is the pattern I will be using. 
I then take my patterned red fabric and I trace my pattern on it. Then I start sewing with the good side spacing in. Don't let me fool you, this took three tries to get it right. If you were in my Instagram livestream, you know how messy this moment was. Um, very. <laughs> I also made her high-waisted shorts off-camera. Now for my grandmother's jacket. This was made by the amazing That Plastic Biz on Instagram. Yes, this came straight from London. Yes, that's happening. I am so, so, so amazed. They were able to get the pattern of the jacket so perfectly, and I love how oversized it is. I do just have to add the X and also the keyboard on it. I'm just using the same fabric for the X. And then for the keyboard, I'm using white pleather fabric. And then for the keyboard designs, I'm just using black acrylic paint to detail it. And now the jacket is completed and I am obsessed with it! And now it's time for the thigh-high boots. I turned it good side facing in and I sewed it onto her leg. This way we can get a very fitted boot. I only sew it till I get to the ankle part and that's where I stop. I then trim off the extra fabric and I turn it inside out. I put it on the doll and I also attach the resin shoe. And now we take our super glue and glue the fabric to the shoe. You want to make sure to work in parts and you also want to pull the fabric as tight as possible. After a few hours, it should be completely dry and we can trim off the excess fabric. Then, of course, she needs to have some red bottoms. Yes, we need some Christian Louboutin in this house. And now we are done with our boots. As you can see, it's very seamless, it's really really cool looking, I am so in love, and I actually can't see which one is right and which one's left, like, the, sh the shoe part came out pretty good. And now we're at that part where it took me almost 4 days to get a semi-decent result. I gave her red sunglasses very very last minute while I was sketching her and I ended up really loving it so I wanted to take this OMG LOL glasses and make a copy of it in red. I built a box chamber with hot glue and popsicle sticks. Then I take my silicone mold putty and I mixed 1 to 1 ratio. Then I take a mold of the front of the glasses. See, so far so good, it's pretty easy. 
Now, let's take our easy cast clear resin and also our ruby red resin dye. I was mixing so little that my scale was not reading the weight, so I had to eyeball all of the measurements. I mix them together and I add the dye in it. And unfortunately this cures roughly after 24 hours and 72 hours for it to be stone hard. That's why it took me so freaking long. And this is what I got after 24 hours. As you can see, the bubbles are out and about. And um, yeah, this is just one out of 20 failed attempts. I couldn't wait 24 hours just for one glasses to cure, so I made more molds of the same glasses. Was it a waste of molds? Yes. Did it speed up the process? I guess. Um, and th these are just some of the failed attempts. The others didn't even cure at all, so I had to really throw them all. And as you can see, it's just bubbles galore. And if it's not bubbles, there were two gummy worm-like, like it was really like, it didn't cure at all. And yes, I tried it all, I mixed it slowly, I poured it slowly, I tapped the sides, I used fire on it. I did everything aside from buying a pressure chamber, which I don't know if spending $300 is worth it for one pair of glasses. Um, so my main backup was just to paint one completely, but I didn't want to give up just yet. One thing that made me more mad is that I poured the remaining resin on other molds like the lion and also the moon and they all came out almost perfect like there's no bubbles in it and I even tried different brands of resin and it was still a no-go. I even tried to use hot glue for the mold and although it had no bubbles, it also had no structure. And I was actually kind of scared because imagine Sasha wearing this and then the sun gets to her, it would have melted instantly. My very last try was during a live stream, a very very late night live stream, and I want to thank everyone who helped me in the process, especially Jean Marie Tucker. She literally directed me on what not to do and it actually worked. These two have like one or two small bubbles in it and I was like, you know what? It's already pretty good. I was really ecstatic with it. The downside is that it is still kind of gummy like. It's not sticky, it's just not structured. I glued the temple on it to see if it can hold up on the face and it actually can so I just went for it. Another last minute addition was this paperclip bag I've been seeing on my Instagram feed. It's one of those ads and I thought it was actually really cool. I decided to use a real clip for this and I just covered it with pleather. This fabric has such a beautiful texture and it would really make it look like a bag. I just cover the front, the back, and also the side using hot glue. And I actually folded the sides to give it more of a bag feel. Then I took silver paint to give it a hint of branding. Now let's go ahead and assemble Miss Bunny Boo. Oh, and I almost forgot to add the off-white logo, but I decided to actually write Boo for Bunny Boo instead. And I also made her a mask that says Bunny so that it kind of completes the Bunny Boo look because we care about everyone's safety. We're mask wearers in here.
and now we're done.